This is a legendary, this is a mythical, this is an ultra beast, and this is a paradox Pokemon. Argue about it in the comment section. Why am I explaining that they're different categories? Well, because in the official competitive Pokemon format of VGC, mythicals are never legal, but everything else is. Except for the one time that mythicals were legal. Another thing about VGC is that Pokemon never get banned due to usage stats, except for the one time that they were. But are these official formats? That's a pretty complicated question. Some of these formats were run during a period of time that makes their status of official pretty questionable. But besides these formats, there were also a number of fan-made VGC formats that had major popularity among players, at times overtaking the official formats. I think that we should discuss these today, so today, let's talk about fake Pokemon formats. If you enjoy this video on any point in time, be sure to leave a like and subscribe because I make tons of competitive Pokemon content. As a matter of fact, you should subscribe right now because of a playlist full of content just like this that I know you'll enjoy once this video ends. And if you think you're subscribed, do me a favor and double check because like only half of my viewers actually are. I suppose it's best to define what the average VGC format looks like and how we can point out patterns with each rule set. Typically speaking, the first few formats of a generation will begin with the very simple rule set and ban list, in which only the Pokemon caught in the regional decks are legal, with the exception of a few restricted Pokemon like in the format of VGC 2017. The next format will allow for the usage of Pokemon not caught within the base decks like that of VGC 2018, and the final format will allow for the use of restricted legendary Pokemon such as Groudon and Kyogre like in the format of VGC 2019. While in Gen 8 and 9, Pokemon decided to introduce shorter, rotating rule sets, we can still observe that these rule sets followed the same basic pattern. In 2023, we had the Paldea decks available, with the exception of a few Paradox Pokemon and Sub-Legendaries, then over the course of the year we gained access to the previously banned Pokemon, leading up to the first DLC granting us access to the Kitakami decks in Regulation E, and the Blueberry decks in Regulation F, and then finally access to restricted Legendaries like Corridon and Terrapagos in Regulation G. Once we have access to these restricted Pokemon, that format is typically what we play leading all the way up until the World Championships, at which point the season ends and we wait for the next season or the next games. However, this rule has been broken more than once. The months between the World Championships and the next season, September to November, or possibly January, will typically not have any official tournaments run, at least not in the Switch era of competitive Pokemon. So it's a perfect time to have somewhat of a chaos format. This is exactly what happened in Series 13 of VGC 2022. This format was run from September 1st all the way up until the end of the generation, leading into Gen 9 in November. This format is the first and only time the online ranked ladder allowed for the usage of mythical Pokemon. Not only this, but the typical limit of two restricted Pokemon was lifted meaning a team could hypothetically be composed entirely of restricted legendaries and mythical Pokemon. Some common combinations of Pokemon included Tornadus Tailwind Hyper Offense with Zacian Crown, Calyrex Shadow, and Kyogre, as well as Tornadus Tailwind Hyper Offense with Zacian Crown, Calyrex Shadow, and Groudon. Now, typically, mythical Pokemon aren't banned due to their power, but rather because they're widely inaccessible. Where a legendary Pokemon can always be obtained simply by purchasing a game and catching one, mythicals are almost always timed events which can't be obtained after the fact. Just go ahead and try to get hold of a Hoopa or a Marshadow nowadays. I don't even have one of these and I play the game for a living. In all honesty, mythical Pokemon weren't too great in this format though when you had them stacked up against unlimited restricted Pokemon. With the exception of only a few, most notably Magearna. I'm sure I don't need to explain to singles players why Magearna is busted, but if you're unaware, Magearna is a fairy steel type Pokemon, which not only has some pretty impressive bulk and offensive stats, as well as a fairy type Jerko Meteor clone, but its ability Soul Heart grants it a special attack boost for every Pokemon on the field that faints. This includes Magearna's partners. Actually, a really funny combination for this format was using Scar Final Gambit Victini with Magearna next to it to instantly score a KO at the expense of your own Victini getting KO'd and getting Trick Room off for Magearna while granting it plus two special attack instantly. That's pretty ridiculous, right? Well, it was, but as the format went on, we saw less and less usage of mythicals since they were usually just straight up outclassed by a restricted Pokemon most of the time. But the most notable of these Pokemon were Magearna, Zeraora, Melmetal, and Victini. While this format is official in that it was created by Pokemon employees and ran on the official ranked ladder, it was never intended to be played in any official tournament which could qualify a player for the World Championships. So for that reason, it's not really regarded as a VGC format in the traditional sense. While this format was initially very fun and popular among players, eventually VGC players got pretty bored of it and switched to another fan-made format to kill time until Generation 9. 
Dynamax is widely regarded as the worst competitive gimmick. I don't make the rules, that's just the common sentiment. Ranking below Mega Evolution, Z-Moves, and Terrestrialization. This is mainly due to the fact that the mechanic changed the way that the game was played in such a drastic manner that it caused even seasoned competitive players to drop the game for a whole generation. It's this mechanic that led to the creation of Spike Myth Cup. Spike Myth is simply the national dex format of Pokemon Sword and Shield with one additional rule that you can never ever Dynamax a Pokemon. This format was named for the town of Spike Myth in Sword and Shield, which was the only town in the game where you weren't able to Dynamax any Pokemon. Piers, the gym leader of this town, was based and Spike Myth pilled. He was a fake out maxing Heavy Slam cell. If you even vaguely understood what I just said, I just I need you to take a break from the internet. I need to do it too, but let's at least finish this video. Dynamax was a really strange mechanic. Not only did it turn a single Pokemon into a giant with double its health pool and basically three Z moves, which caused field effects and stat changes, but it even messed with the fundamentals of competitive Pokemon by making said Dynamax Pokemon ignore any flinches and making weight-based attacks unusable on them and even allowing them to partially bypass protect. Effectively, this format encouraged hyper-offensive playstyles and made any defensive play extremely niche and ineffective. By simply banning the mechanic, Spike Myth completely flipped the way Sword and Shield was played. Since Dynamax was gone, different Pokemon which struggled in Dynamax were able to thrive, like Alola Ninetales and Landorus Incarnate, who was now a major threat since it could finally make full use of sheer force for the first time in VGC. Moves like Low Kick and Heavy Slam also finally got to see some usage, and we could fully appreciate the beautiful animations offered in Generation 8 without Dynamax turning them into the little baps and the little pows that you just see on them. It was it was really lame, because have you ever seen Glacial Lance? You ever seen Glacial Lance's animation? Now, now look at it with the Dynamax Pokemon on the other side of it. It's, it's really lame. This format was so popular that online tournaments were ran regularly, and it was even run as a side event at the 2022 World Championships. This is a testament as to just how much the competitive community hated the Dynamax mechanic, but Spike Myth wasn't the only place that they fled to just to avoid having to play with it. In November 2021, Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl were released to less than stellar reviews. These games were unfinished and lacked many of the features present in Platinum, which lots of fans were hopeful would make it into the Diamond and Pearl remakes. In fairness though, the lack of these features technically makes them more faithful to the originals, but play those games nowadays and tell me if you really want any more of that. Fortunately, a feature which made it into these games was online play, and many VGC players were eager to try out a Gen 4 format with modern battle mechanics. And to be honest, it was a really fun format. The limited decks and new mechanics led to a familiar yet new experience compared to the format which had been played back in 2009. Some top tier Pokemon included Pelipper, Ludicolo, Garchomp, Togekiss, Scizor, and even Hariyama. The format was so popular that I took it upon myself to use my platform to organize a code on which players could search for specifically VGC matches, bypassing the lack of an in-game ladder. And it was really active for the time that BDSP VGC was big on YouTube and in online tournaments. Really what killed BDSP VGC wasn't the lack of a ladder or the lack of fun, but the release of a brand new official VGC rule set in the 2022 format which was just around the corner. But while it lasted, players had fun testing out new teams with the extremely limited pool of Pokemon. It also helped that Urshifu, Rillaboom, and Incineroar weren't present in the game at all. Unfortunately, while BDSP VGC was widely popular, the other unofficial format of Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee VGC never really took off. This could be for a number of reasons, but the lack of held items, the strange training mechanics removing EVs, and the lack of any Pokemon outside of Gen 1 combined with the ongoing official 2019 format being played really prevented any players from being excited to play it beyond the initial release. Though there were a number of players who did enjoy LGPE doubles and created content for it throughout the course of the game. Now, technically every single Smogon format is made up, but there's more Smogon players than VGC players, so we need to respect it. The final format we'll cover today is the format known as VGC 2021 Series 6, aka the only format with usage-based bans like Smogon, but where Smogon's bans actually make sense since there's intention to them meant to balance the game, the Pokemon company did something pretty reckless. You see, similar to Series 13, this format came out in a time where there would have been no tournaments, but since this happened mid-pandemic, there weren't any official tournaments anyway, so the distinction didn't really matter. Just know that this would have been the chaos format between August and November. This format banned the top 10 most used Pokemon from both the singles and doubles ladder. Yeah, that doesn't really make any sense. Why would you ban Magnezone and Hippowdon from VGC when they were only strong in singles? Like, don't get me wrong, straight up banning the top 10 most used Pokemon without any nuance is already a really bad idea, but Hippo and Magnezone just kind of caught strays for no reason. 
The complete ban list for Series 6 included Torkoal, Venusaur, Gyarados, Porygon 2, Tyranitar, Hippowdon, Magnezone, Togekiss, Whimsicott, Incineroar, Mimikyu, Rillaboom, Cinderace, Indeedee, and Dragapult. Now, there's some funny stuff about this list beyond the strays caught by the single Pokemon, like Indeedee Male being banned even though Indeedee Female was the only one with high usage. This is despite the fact that Indeedee Female is a Pokemon with entirely different stats and moves, they just share a Pokedex number. So, Psychic Terrain was just completely non-existent in this format, and Porygon 2 was banned due to new toy syndrome. Prior to Series 5, Dusclops was actually the premier Eviolite Trick Room Pokemon, but Porygon 2 returned in the Isle of Armor DLC, leading to a momentary spike in usage that knocked Dusclops just out of top 10. Even though, towards the end of Series 5, Dusclops was likely going to become a little bit more popular. Dusclops just barely managed to dodge the ban list because of this. But there were even greater implications to just straight up banning the top 10 Pokemon in the formats. No Rillaboom meant no Grassy Terrain, no Tyranitar and Hippowdon meant Gigalith was the only sand setting Pokemon, the lack of Torkoal and Venusaur meant that Sunroom teams were basically non-existent, and losing major redirection Pokemon like Indeedee and Togekiss meant that Hyper Offense just got that much better. And somehow, Urshifu managed to dodge both the singles and doubles ban list, meaning it was allowed in this format. I don't know how that happened, that would never fly nowadays, Urshifu's number one like everywhere. This format just ended up becoming a mess of Talonflame Tailwind paired with Max Strike Adaptability Life Orb Porygon Z or Life Orb Hustle Dracozolt, nuking each other's side of the field. As it turns out, when you remove the top Pokemon in the game, what you get isn't necessarily better variety, but just a different set of top tiers making the game far more centralized than it was before. I can't count just how many Porygon Z Clefairy Mirrors I played or comfy weakness policy Lapras teams I had to face on the ladder. What made this an especially frustrating format was that while it was widely regarded as a bad format by competitive players, there were people online claiming it was among the best formats because they simply never saw a Dragapult or Togekiss for the entire run, seemingly missing the fact that High Ladder was overrun with the same few hyper-offensive cores. It's no wonder that we never had a ban list like this ever done again. Though, in fairness, towards the end of the format we did see slightly better variety, however we didn't really get the time to explore any of that. But those were just a few fake VGC formats. Of course, we could count stuff like Little Cup and every single smoke on tier as a quote fake format, but VGC has a pretty interesting history with this sort of stuff, so I wanted to document it and share my knowledge on it. But let me know what you think about these fan-made formats or chaos formats in the comment section down below, and let me know what you think I should cover next. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like and subscribe, it'd mean the world to me. And if you want to support me further, you can check out my Patreon page or become a YouTube channel member by clicking the join button below. This gets you sneak peeks at future videos and even some bonus content. You'll even see your name at the end of my videos like all these lovely people. A special thanks to my most boosted supporters Avatar67, Jordan Harridge, and Ranger Lance for their generous pledges. Another way to support me is to check out the videos in the playlist on screen right now. I know you'll find something in there that you'll enjoy. I also have a second channel where I talk about current VGC metagame trends, and a Twitch channel where I stream battles, both of which are in the description. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!